Right, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be carrying on with some more of our math nodes. Um, so if you haven't watched the first video, I suggest you go and do that now, because um, we're going to be taking some of these ideas and building on them. Um, but if you have, uh, let's get started and look, run through a few more of these examples I've got here. So um, the next one on the list is the absolute node. Um, so before I talk about the absolute node too much, I want to talk a little bit about sine waves. So uh, sine waves are something we use quite a lot in VFX when we want to do some animation. Um, and if we just debug the scalar, um, place this in here. So a sine wave is something that uh, kind of oscillates back and forth between minus one and one. And you see that in the numbers here. If I go in here, have a look at my graphical calculator, Take the sine of x, and we get these values going from sine, uh, some positive one to negative one, um, and a sine wave starts at zero. Um, you might remember cosine wave. Cosine wave is the exact same waveform um, in that it starts at or goes between one and minus one, um, but cosine starts at uh, at one instead of at zero. So they've just been offset slightly in time. Um, Obviously, they both exist in Unreal. We can do time sine, we can do cosine as well. Um, and this will just be the same, but slightly offset. And remember, uh, Unreal can't really display negative numbers, so uh, this is where potentially our absolute might come in. Um, so the absolute of something uh, just ignores any negatives. So if we put in minus 1 and absolute it, we get 1, which is the same as this. And if we absolute our sine wave, see we're getting this kind of like bouncing, pulsing, which can be useful for things. So here, um, let's get rid of that a sec. I think it's done as abs, um, and then sine x. There we are. You can see it's just ignoring all those negative numbers, and we get this kind of bouncing pattern, um, which is pretty cool. Um, it can be quite useful. So um, yeah, that's what the absolute node does. Um, and hopefully, yeah, some sines and, and cosines and things. So, um, moving on. Let's just click that. Um, someone made a quest about uh, the clamp node and when to use it. So we did have a quick look at using clamp here, or we were using a clamp here um, last time. But there's a few other ways we can use clamps. So firstly, what does a clamp do? Well, if I take this texture, this is just a normal packed clouds texture so it's three different cloud noises in different channels we do this quite a lot uh, in games to reuse different things we only need black and white masks well textures have full RGB may as well pack in three different masks together um, and we can see here we've got values in the range from 0 to 1 now what a clamp does is basically says any number that's below that or above that um, just clamp it off. So you can see here these values in grey, so I'm clamping now between let's say 0.5 and 1. Any values that were darker than that, I range here now would be 0.5 to 1. Uh, anything that were darker than that, so anything of the, the darks that were in here, um, they've just been ignored, they've just been flattened out. So all these dark values down here um, are being removed. Uh, and the same in reverse, so you can do 0 and 0.5 now any of the light values are being removed so we're getting mid grey um, not hugely useful when you're working between 0 and 1 but quite often you can do a bunch of maths to something and then clamp it back to 0 to 1 and that will be really useful if that's what we were doing before here we were getting very high values and then clamping back um, getting these kind of like areas of black and white uh, and we can do the same thing so um, if I take a sine wave then just do this well. Um, a sine wave is very repetitive. I'll put that one back on. What you could do, um, if I start doing sine of a different period, so let's say sine 2x or sine uh, 1.5x, something like that, if I combine these two together, they're both very repetitive. By the time I combine them together, sine 1.5x plus sine x, I hide these two. You can see how they're kind of 
combining together into something a bit more irregular. It's still a repeating pattern, but it repeats over a long, lot longer period. Um, and so you could then maybe have sine, I don't know, 0 0.7 plus x in there, uh, plus sine x, plus sine 5x. You can see how we're starting to build up this quite a regular pattern. Um, and it might be that we wanted to clamp this between 0 and 1. So, um, I don't think this graphical calculator has a clamp, but what it does have, we get back to Unreal, we jump it back and forth a little today, but um, as well as clamp, there are two terms, uh, min and max. And min and max basically do the exact same things that clamp are doing, but only the two ends of it, as it were. So clamp does both a min and a max at the same time. So if I do a min of 0.5, any values over 0.5 are now reduced down to 0.5. Um, but the bottom range isn't being affected, and the same with the max. So a max of 0.25, all these dark values are going, but the values above that are fine. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, so a clamp effectively is a min and max at the same time. So going back to my graphical calculator, um, if I take this, I can do a min of this and one and that's kind of giving me that that clamping so you see any value that was a greater than one has disappeared um, and if we're using this say as an emissive uh, we don't really want negative values in that or if we're kind of like using it to blend between things we don't want values in that so if I copy this I can then do a max of that Ooh, this should be an open bracket open bracket and one And zero. There we are. And um, we can see now we've created a interesting shape. We've also clamped off the min and max values uh, above and below, uh, above one, below zero. Um, and this could be useful for all sorts of things. Um, but that's how we use a clamp. So clamp is min and max together. Um, but obviously, this context doesn't have. Uh, have that clamp so we've used min and max together and we've got the same result um, and that's how we do a lot of breaking up animation so it looks quite random quite kind of like um, it's difficult to see any repeating patterns in this um, but in actual fact it's just mathematically driven here yeah, we can see we go between here this pattern here this shape here um, but over the course of a few seconds you'd have to really sit and watch that to see see the repeats in it so um, Hopefully that makes sense. Um, moving on, what else do we have in here? Um, ah, this is a good one. Uh, seal, floor, and frac. So this is three um, different nodes that kind of work together. Um, and a similar kind of thing, we're going to be manipulating our value ranges uh, to make them do what we want. So um, I'm just going to start by taking time. I'm going to take the frac of time. Uh, and what this does, frac, is it ignores any whole number input and just returns the decimal part. So time is values that start at zero and go up. Well, very quickly they get over one, so our base color just becomes one, is solid one for the whole time. Uh, and we can see here now we're going up to one and repeating. Um, it's pretty cool. If I go in here, you can turn this on automatically in here. So time with a period of one. That's doing the same thing. That's period means like over what time does it repeat? So we can say two seconds, and now it's going to go from zero to two, and then repeat. Um, but time with a period of one is the same as the frac of time. And just to show that on the graphical calculator, it's a slightly different terminology. Um, but if we do mod x one, zoom back in again. Um, you can see this is going from zero to one, and then repeating. And this is the kind of um, the pattern we're making by doing a frac. So if we take so x is y, that's effectively time. Starts at zero, goes up, and now we're making it repeat using that, that frac command, um, which can be really useful. Um, so both sine x and frac x are ways of taking an, a sort of uh, an infinitely 
expanding set of numbers such as time uh, and then making them into something that repeats and loops which can be really useful for doing kind of material animations and things with so um, that is frac and if we plug in a texture well it's doing nothing isn't it because this has already had values between 0 and 1 so the fracking that it's just there are no whole numbers to ignore but if we multiply it by 2 first then we can start getting some really interesting patterns um, and so the value what was mid grey is now a kind of threshold between black and white uh, and if I increase the number of layers and say we can go and turn a quite kind of sort of soft clouds noise nothing too um, high frequency there it's no, um, you can see just lots of mid grey values if I multiply it by 3 and then frack it back we can get this really quite kind of um, some interesting things in here and um, because it's a um, taking an, an infinite loop or an infinite number set and making it repeat if we add time to our texture apply it and then frack it we can animate all those things and you can make some really quite interesting patterns maybe a bit fast um, from just a few simple maths and uh, a simple kind of clouds noise um, which is pretty cool um, so if that's what frac does I'm just gonna plug that for a second uh, what does seal do so seal if I just plug it in into base color we will get uh, white um, if we plug in floor we'll get black well what are they doing what they're actually doing uh, is reducing every value down to the nearest whole number or up to the nearest whole number um, so again it doesn't really work with our 0 to 1 range but if we go in here and we multiply our our texture first and then seal it well always thinking about ranges multiplied by 3 so our range is now from 0 to 3 we seal that everything is going to be going up so anything that was in that first range uh, so our values now are going to be 0, 1, 2 and 3 no they're not, be 1, 2 and 3 um, so we need to divide them back again so because we've multiplied them up by 3 we need to divide them back by 3 to get them back to 0 to 1 to get them to be visible and hopefully you can see um, it's given us discrete patterns so where we um, where we had values in our original texture that were darkest it's taken that out and it's making that into a fixed pattern um, and the same you can do this so seal goes up and rounds up like the ceiling uh, and floor rounds down so if I do a floor instead same thing of multiplying and then flooring so a floor will give me 0, 1 and 2 the outputs here and the seal will give me 0, 1 and 3 so or 1, two, one 2 and 3 get my things right so here we're getting pure black and then two other ranges and here we're getting pure white uh, and two other ranges so um, another way there of, of creating some interesting discrete patterns and just to graph that on if I turn off sign second uh, create another one here um, the way this would be would be x minus mod x comma 1 I just hide that so you can see anything between 0 and 1 rounds down to 0 anything that between 1 and 2 rounds down to 1 so this would be effectively a floor um, and we do the same copy paste and just do that as an add Ooh, that's not right is that not right ah, that's right so x minus mod 1 and then plus 1 plus 1 there we are uh, so effectively this would now be a seal so anything between 0 and 1 rounds up anything between 0 and 1 there rounds down um, and hopefully you can see how again we've made a set of discrete numbers out of a fixed input really cool um, what's our next one yeah time yeah um, so now we've got our masks and they're doing lots of cool things um, what can we actually do with our with them um, well we might want to use a lerp we might want to use a, a, a blend between two things so here I've plugged in two colors red and blue if I just plug in an alpha just plug in a scalar value for this uh, if I plug in zero to my alpha um, it's going to give me the red it's going to give me what's in A if 
by plugging one in as the alpha, it's going to give me what's in blue. Uh, 0.5 it's going to blend between them. Um, and so what's this actually doing is, is it takes two points on a st and then draws a straight line between them, between them and then blends between those two points and that's what the lerp is doing and we can use values outside of that so if I go in here and put two you can't really tell in here but if I put this into emissive this is now values over two it's more blue than blue uh, and five etc like this so this is another position where if I said maybe I was blending between two textures I don't know use brick else is in here wood so if I'm blending between two textures so brick and wood uh, did that normal map that's why it's a diffuse map so halfway between brick and wood sort of makes sense um, doesn't look great we can get into those kinds of fixing that later um, but anything over 1 1.5 that's now extra wood that, that's not a useful thing so we might want to do a clamp uh, and clamp going in here. So now we can sometimes use this and use alert to overblow things, um, but we also might just want to clamp that down um, and keep that between 0 and 1. And just on that, there is also, you might have spotted it before, a node called saturate. Um, so if we see in here in the tooltip, saturate, uh, it clamps between 0 and 1. So it's the same as this clamp when you're using 0 and 1. Um, but it's basically free. Most graphics cards have this hard coded in, so uh, this would be cheaper. Um, but it doesn't give us access to those min and max values, but depends on what we're wanting to do. I believe, although don't quote me on this, that if you put a clamp between 0 and 1 in, when it compiles the material, it should convert to a saturate, so it doesn't actually reflect that. So uh, if you see saturate being used, that's what it's doing. It's nothing to do with the color saturation. Um, it's just a clamp between 0 and 1, but it's a free one. So, so there we are. Um, Obviously when we're blending, we can also use a texture to do our blend. So this was just using a single value, that's useful sometimes, but we can also plug in our clouds noise and now we're seeing we're getting blending between those, those two colours. Um, and here, between these two, uh, these two pins, between our mask and our alpha, that's where we can use all of this stuff, all of this, um, all of the, the sort of the power, all of these things to create different masks. Um, and then blend between them there. Um, so that's what a lerp does. Final one for today, uh, I just want to go through an if. Um, similar, but not the same to a lerp, um, and then it blends two things together, but rather than doing it linearly, it just compares values. So in this case, in my if node, my two inputs are red and blue again. If I just open them up, and move them out of the way, so we can see, basically, I'm checking between two things. So um, if I put in a constant here, uh, and let's say, so I've got two inputs, A and B, and then if A is greater than B, display red, and if A is less than B, display blue. So I could say right, 0.5 here, if I then go to minus 0.5, it's going to go to blue, um, but you can't ever get any values between the two inputs, so I couldn't ever get any kind of like purpley colours out of this. Um, it's only ever going to be exactly one or the other. Um, and you can use a texture to drive it. So if here I put in 0.5 or 0.25, whatever like this, I can uh, change my my um, my inputs uh, and get this sort of masked value out of it. But you will always get a hard edge, so you'll always get this single pixel thing. So um, if so are useful, uh, they can be a bit expensive. Um, it will evaluate all both sides of this and um, so generally when we're mixing textures and things we want to use a lerp gives us a bit more control gives us some nice soft edges um, but that is the if node and that is what it does so um, as always I hope that was helpful um, if you have any questions or comments or feedback or anything like that let me know um, and next time we will be carrying on and going through a bunch more math nodes um, I hope you'll find these helpful um, had some pretty good response from last time so I'm definitely going to carry on and run through the rest of these um, and yeah, as always, yeah, and I'll see you all next time.